Good morning, big girls. In today's video, we're going to try to expose any running back this year that I think could potentially be a league winning running back. And the criteria I have for a league winning running back is that you need to average over 20 half PPR points per game. OK, and you have to have played at least 14 games. So I created this little chart. You know, I went out of my way. I did a little research for this and I grabbed every running back that has averaged over 20 half PPR fantasy points per game in a season since 2010. So we're looking at a 13 ish game sample size. Uh, I wanted to see what commonalities we had what things we can derive from the data to see and project, hopefully, what we can expect this year. So in the beginning part of this video, I'll be pointing out interesting things that I found in the chart and in the data. And then the back half of this video will be going through the top 12 running backs that are getting drafted per ADP right now and kind of fit the pieces in whether or not I think that they can fit this criteria and average over 20 half PPR fantasy points per game. So y'all know what it is. So we will throw the data up on the screen. And for the most part, it's it's pretty basic data. But I wanted to look at some volume stats, some efficiency stats, some team stats, because I think all are equally important. OK, so we have points per game. Obviously, we have everyone listed starting in 2023. The only player that did it was Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, if you're listening via podcast, this is probably an episode that you want to go check out on YouTube. That will be linked down below. We got carries, rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, targets, receptions, receiving yards, receiving touchdowns, total opportunities, total touches, total touchdowns. The offensive line rank that year in terms of run blocking rank only the team points per game and the team points per game rank that last column is supposed to say rank after it. So you see like team points per game at the top with San Francisco 28.6 all the way in the top right there that rank was second in the NFL so I wanted to get a look at like the overall volume a player had the overall production the player had in what parts of the games that they had it in and then also the supporting cast so how often was the team scoring and how uh, helpful was the offensive line so that was the data that we pulled now this is a sample size of 21 running backs so 21 running backs since the year 2010 13 years, 21 running backs, so a little less than two per year have averaged over 20 half PPR fantasy points per game. And you know that if you had these guys on your teams during these years, you were a lock to make the playoffs, obviously. Uh, a lot of times you ended up losing in the playoffs because, listen, it takes one unlucky week. C-Mac, thank you for not carrying my team to the playoffs in the leagues that I had you in last year. C-Mac, you know, guys like JT, uh, the Derrick Henrys in 2020, the Todd Gurley's in 18 and 17, the David Johnson's in 16. Like, those are the types of performances we're talking about. And, of course, the GOAT, Arian Foster, down there in 2010 and 2011, okay? So the first thing I wanted to try to identify was what kind of pass-catching work are we looking for in a running back? And some of these stats are going to be a little bit scattered. So if you need to go back and, like, re-watch or re-listen to what I'm saying here to kind of pick apart your own takeaway ways from here and of course you could always pause on the screen and just look at the chart yourself six of the 21 running backs on this list finished with fewer than 50 catches so for the most part you needed to have above 50 catches to get onto this list now if you did not you probably had an elite run blocking line so we had six of 21 finished with fewer than 50 catches five of those six had a top nine run blocking line four of those six had a top six run blocking line so you know it feels obvious if you're not going to catch a lot of passes you're probably going to run the ball really really effectively and to run the ball really effectively typically you need a very good offensive line okay it is very hard to run the ball effectively in this league with a shitty offensive line all right on the vice versa side of these things the offensive line became far less important uh by the more targets you got there were seven running backs on this list seven of 21 that saw 105 or more targets in their you know in their big season five of those seven had an offensive line that ranked 14 or plus and four of them were in the bottom half of the league so obviously if you're a player that gets a lot of targets you don't necessarily need to be great on the ground you don't need the supporting system to be great on the ground around you that makes sense because you're getting a lot more fantasy points just via the air if you have a bad offensive line your team might you know there's a lot of uh connections you can make in, in just a very uh normal like 
common sense standpoint, right? You have a bad offensive line as a team. You're you're probably losing games. You're probably trailing, meaning you need to play catch up, meaning you get more targets. But obviously, if you're a running back that sees 100 plus targets, 105 plus targets, you are probably a fucking phenomenal pass catching back. I mean, we're talking about the dudes like Alvin Kamara. We're talking about the C-Max on this list. We're talking about the Le'Veon Bells. Guys like that are the ones that get over the 105 target mark. But obviously, if you are looking at a player and you're trying to project them to be a league winning running back and they have a bad offensive line, you have to make sure that they are getting a shitload of targets as well. Every single running back on this list scored at least 11 total touchdowns. And there were only two instances in which a running back had fewer than 200 carries. Both of them were Alvin Kamara in 2018 and 2020. Now, here's here's kind of an interesting one. Of the running backs that had fewer than 300 carries. So the 300 carry mark is not one that you need to get onto this list because there were 14 of the 21. So you're talking about 66% of the running backs on this list had fewer than 300 carries. But this is a huge number. Of the 14 running backs that had fewer than 300 carries, they averaged 101 targets, 77 catches, and 4.4 receiving touchdowns in that season. And that stat kind of blew my not, my mind because 14 running backs, that's a large sample size. So to average over 100 targets is not, not something we see like all the time. And I know what you're saying, like, oh, you know, that's lifted up by CMAX, huge season of 145 targets and all that production. I took CMAX numbers out of this next number, right? And if we scale that down from 14 to 13, the 13 running backs that have fewer than 300 carries, they still average over 98 targets per game if you take out C-Max 145 target season. So again, if you are a running back that is not massive volume, if you're not confident that this running back's going to get over 300 carries, you better be damn fucking sure that they are going to get, you know, 80, 90, over 101 targets to see league winning type upside. Now, On the flip side, of the running backs that had over 300 carries, they averaged 15.3 rushing touchdowns. They averaged 54 targets, 42 catches, and just one single receiving touchdown. Their offensive line ranked sixth in the league, and only one of them was outside of the top 10. So simply getting a shitload of volume, 320 carries, is probably not going to mean much if you don't have the upside of scoring 13, 14, 15 rushing touchdowns in terms of, you know, drafting a league winning running back. Interestingly enough, when we filter to the top scoring seasons of the last 13 years, right? Like all this was in uh, annual order. But when you when you filter in terms of like the highest scoring seasons within that time frame, none of the guys who are in the top five, the best seasons of the last 13 years cracked 300 carries. But every single one of them saw more than 80 targets. That 300 carry mark is going to matter for guys that don't catch passes, right? Like we're looking for 300 plus carries. We're looking for 15 plus rushing touchdowns with a very, very good offensive line. Now, when we look at the team overall in terms of like scoring offense, every player that didn't have a top 12 scoring offense had over 100 targets on the year that they averaged 20 half PPR fantasy points per game, except for the fucking Zyborg Adrian Peterson in 2012. And I think that kind of speaks of, of the style of player that were able to hit these numbers, right? Like you look at the dudes who are not targeted a ton, the ones that were able to make this list, they brought like real breakaway speed, home run scoring to the field and to that side of the offense, right? The JTs, the Adrian Petersons, the Derrick Henrys, like the dudes that just went fucking bananas. So another thing to think about, if if, if you don't think the players are going to get a ton of targets, but they have home run speed, I think that's a little bit of leverage that you could throw on the, onto the positivity side here. So when I look at the player pool of guys this year, who I think can reasonably be a 20 half PR point per game scorer, I'm looking at the top 12 backs on underdog. This is the ADP. It's C-Mac, Bijan, Brees Hall, Jameer Gibbs, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon, Devon A. Chan. Kyron Williams, Derrick Henry, Travis Etienne, Isaiah Pacheco, and Josh Jacobs. We will run through these. Uh, I'll try to keep it quick. I'll try to keep it concise. I'll try to keep it for you. First up, we got C-Mac. Of course, he can do it. He's done it three times already. Bijan Robinson. Uh, yes, I think he has the capability of being in a high-scoring offense. Doesn't hurt that this offensive line is going to be top five. There are consensus top five offensive line in the league, so that's also going for them. He is someone who could easily see 80, 85, 90-plus 
targets. He's a guy that can, if this is a high scoring offense, score 12, 13, 14 rushing touchdowns. So Bijan, I think, obviously fits his criteria. I would be shocked if by the end of his career, he doesn't have at least one of these 20 half PPR point per game type season. So the offensive line gets me really, really hyped for this. And this was a bunch of research I was doing within the draft guide. Now that sort of analysis, that information, the offensive line, stuff like that is in our draft guide, which is officially open for pre-order right now on bdge.co. It's a discounted price on there until August 1st when the draft guide actually goes live. But the cheapest way to get it, as always, every single year, shout out to Underdog Fantasy for running this back. If you go deposit on Underdog Fantasy, underdogfantasy.com, their app, $10. If it's your first time depositing, you will get our draft guide absolutely free. And anyone that deposited it after April 15th of this year will also get the draft guide retroactively for free. So don't worry. I got love for everybody that comes our way April 15th or from now until the end of the summer, you will get the draft guide absolutely free if you deposit on Underdog Fantasy using code BDGE. So the discounted price, if you're in a state that doesn't do Underdog or if you've already signed up for Underdog, uh, then you can still go get the pre-order discounted price on BDGE.co. Let's move down to number three, Mr. Brees Hall. They have an improved offensive line. He is obviously an extremely, extremely qualified pass catcher behind Aaron Rodgers and has breakaway speed. I will say I'm a little bit more hesitant about this one. I think the Jets offensive line is always hypothetically going to be good and then rarely is. They can rarely stay healthy and put like a good season together, but we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm not super positive that this offense is going to be really high scoring either. I think it's going to be slow pace. I think it's like our defense is going to win us games kind of thing. And we have yet to see what Rodgers has left in the tank. You know, I'm just painting the picture of where it could go. To, to have a 20 point per game season, like everything has to break right and you have to be fucking phenomenal. So when I look at the Jets offense, I think there are a few things that can for sure break wrong and be the difference between 20 uh, points per game and 16 and a half or 17 and a half. But overall, Brees, like I'm not shying away from Brees whatsoever. He's a monster. He can excel on all three downs. He's got breakaway speed uh, and size. He's now two years removed from the ACL. But again, if you're if you're as hesitant about the Jets offense as I am, I will keep relaying this to you. Every player that didn't have a top 12 scoring offense had a hundred plus targets except for Adrian Peterson. So keep that in mind. Next up, we got Jameer Gibbs. I think he can easily have a uh, Alvin Kamara 2018 or 2020 season. He's explosive as fuck. He's running behind the number one offensive line in the NFL in Detroit. He can catch 80 plus passes. Uh, we saw Alvin Kamara get it done with Ingram in New Orleans, and we could see the same thing with David Montgomery in Detroit. Like even with Demont playing really well, going over a thousand rushing yards, scoring a ton of touchdowns on the goal line, like Gibbs was still able to score 10 rushing touchdowns in just 15 regular season games, and then scored a rushing touchdown in all three playoff games that the Lions had. So like, uh, yeah, Gibbs Gibbs could I, I think crack this mark with ease. Next up, we got JT, and, and and to be honest with you, despite him already being on this list, I'm I'm a bit more unsure uh, about JT's outlook this year in terms of hitting that 20 point per game mark because if you're not going to catch passes which he really doesn't do and now you add in the mobile quarterback who's not really going to dump the ball off to the running backs his target ce ceiling is probably like 40 45 if we're being realistic and, and practical here right uh, and in that 2021 season when he did it he had 53 targets so we'll see but I will say sneakily uh, the Colts kind of revamped their offensive line their PFF grade last year was as good as it was back in 2021 which was a surprise to me but the big concern here is again like those running backs that didn't have a, a, a ton of targets and a ton of receptions always ended up scoring 13 14 15 rushing touchdowns and it's not that JT can't do that obviously but you add in Anthony Richardson and he's going to be stealing a ton of goal line touchdowns right we saw him score three rushing touchdowns in like three full games last year when you when you discount for injuries and everything so I think if you cut JT's numbers by like 10 to 15 targets and instead of scoring those like 18 rushing touchdowns that he did in 2021 he scores 12 or 13 not that I don't think he could be like a high-end RB1, but I think the, the league-winning type upside gets uh, a little bit shaky to me. And while I want to believe that this Colts offense is going to be fucking phenomenal, again, if they're not top 12, like top 12 is not that easy to crack. It's not that difficult, but it's not like super easy to crack. If something goes wrong and they're not top 12, again, you're looking for a running back that has 100 plus targets. Uh, Saquon Barkley, I think a ton of the same argument can be made here. I'm just not that sold that Saquon himself as a player is the same running back, explosive running back that he was when he came into the NFL, uh, that that dynamite rookie year. We have Hurts obviously stealing a shitload of goal line carries. We have Hurts who doesn't really check down to running backs. We have Jason Kelsey, of course, who is, is gone now, and he was their highest graded run blocker and 
kind of has been annually and, and has played at an all pro level for you know half a decade now. I see Saquon as more of a floor play than a ceiling play this year. I know that seems counterintuitive, but that's what I get based on the situation. Next up, we got Devon Achan. And while he like actually did this on limited touches last year and limited playtime, and I've been hyping him all offseason, I'm going to continue to drafting him. He's fun as shit to have on your team. I actually, the more I look at these numbers, the more I think it's probably unlikely that he ends up breaking the game this year, right? Overall, they just didn't really throw to their running backs much in this offense. Like, I, I, And Mostert is still there. They extended him. He'll probably get a decent chunk of work as long as he's healthy. He'll get goal line touches. And their offensive line, who ranked 18th in run blocking last year, their two best run blocking linemen, Connor Williams, tore his ACL in week 11 and is a free agent. They're not resigning him. And Robert Hunt, who signed a five-year, $100 million deal in Carolina. Both of their, their highest graded run blocking linemen, when they weren't a good run blocking line last year to begin with, are gone. So they're going to get worse there. Still love HN. Still, still want to draft him, like I said. Uh, but I think there are enough moving parts here that I, I don't know if I see him, you know, cracking that Andrew Jackson per game mark. Next up, we got Kyron Williams. I mean, Kyron quite literally averaged like 19.8 points per game last year, so he was just under the mark. Uh, the Rams were ninth in scoring. They had the fifth highest graded run blocking line in the league last year. He's a very good pass catcher. I know Blake Corum is there, but I still think. Kyron has every bit of upside to actually crack this just based on what we've already seen from him as an NFL player. Derrick Henry, I think Derrick Henry could actually score like 18 rushing touchdowns this year. Gus Edwards last year had four multi-touchdown games last year and led the entire NFL in goal line carries with 23 of them, okay? And that was with Lamar Jackson scoring five rushing touchdowns, which was his most since 2020. Realistically, dude, they just I know a lot of people think like Lamar Jackson is like Jalen Hurts where he's going to steal a lot of goal line carries, but they, they just don't use Lamar Jackson down there like that. He had five goal line carries all of last year, five, which is three times fewer than both Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts had. It was the same number that Justin Herbert had playing in three fewer games. You look back at last year, 2020, he had four goal line carries. OK, it's just it's just not what they do down there. So. With Derrick Henry, I think he could be a dude who leads the NFL in goal line carries. I think he could score 15 to 18 rushing touchdowns. What does concern me a bit uh, is usually with these types of guys, like when we saw Henry being a 20-point-per-game guy, he was behind a top-five offensive line. Now, Baltimore kind of reshifted their offensive line. They traded away Morgan Moses. Uh, they lost both Kevin Zeitler and John Simpson to free agency. So, like, they took some hits there. And they used their first round pick on Nate Wiggins instead of uh, an offensive lineman. So I think there's a chance that this offensive line is a lot weaker than we have been accustomed to seeing it out there in Baltimore. And I don't know that we have the same Derrick Henry where he's capable of ripping off the 60, 70 yard rushing touchdowns. If he still is, this will be the offense that he does it in, obviously, with the holes opening up behind Lamar Jackson. But that makes me just a little bit shaky in general. Same thing with the next guy, Travis Etienne. I'm having trouble talking myself into ETN here because I just don't see him ever getting over 300 carries. I don't see him ever getting like 80, 90 plus targets. Uh, the offensive line last year was the second worst run blocking line per PFF uh, in the entire NFL. OK, and their 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 general offense is just extremely middle of the pack and scoring 15th last year. I just don't see a ton of paths here. And again, when I go back to it, like you need to see a shit ton, shit ton of carries or a shit ton of targets in a great offense or behind a great offensive line. And like, I don't see him really hitting any of those marks. So ETN is the guy where I think he is the least likely almost on this list to get there. Isaiah Pacheco, sneaky, sneaky candidate to get there. Great offensive line, great offense. McKinnon is now gone, which means there's a ton of pass catching, a ton of upside, ton of scoring opportunities. I mean, the dude scored eight touchdowns in their final eight games last year, including playoffs. And I was looking at the numbers in the games where McKinnon was gone. Isaiah Pacheco played in like 75 percent of the two and four minute snaps, which is huge for pass catching upside. So uh, Pacheco, while he's not as talented, I think, as, as most of the guys on this list, I think he has as good of an opportunity as anybody to hit that 20 points per game mark. So I think he's a sneaky bet to get there. Uh, Josh Jacobs, the, the next and last guy up on this list, the, the Packers. Okay, offensive line. They were actually ranked 23rd in run blocking last year. They did add a first rounder. They do have a good offense, of course. He's not sniffing 100 targets in that offense. I would be very, very uh, surprised if he sniffed 75 targets. He could score a shitload of goal line touchdowns for sure. Uh, but Matt LaFleur like keeps coming out and saying that like he plans on 
having a committee back there. And he didn't even know that Aaron jo- Jones was going to be gone when they signed Josh Jacobs. So it didn't feel like it was a one-for-one swap, at least from a head coaching standpoint, okay? I think Marshawn Lloyd will eat into his work a little bit. A.J. Dillon is a fucking cone, but they did resign him, and he has led the team in goal line carries in each of the past few years. So, like, maybe there's a roll down there for him. Jacobs doesn't have breakaway speed. So, like, I'm, I'm way more hesitant on Jacobs. And obviously, we're getting down the list now. So the further you get down the running back rankings, the less likely they are to be capable of pulling off a 20 point per game type B. All right. Um, and then I'm looking at running backs like further down the list. No one really stands out to me that I think can can hit this mark. I think if James Cook got goal line work, he could for sure make a case here. But he gets literally no goal line work. He had like three rushing touchdowns, maybe two rushing touchdowns last year. So it doesn't look like that's changing anytime soon. So uh, that's really it to me. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this video. I took me kind of a while to make it so if you did make sure you hit the button that looks like this down below subscribe to the channel and of course the best way to support us as always is going to sign up on underdog with promo code bdge that will get you a deposit bonus on there ten dollars or more plus it will get you the draft guide absolutely free or you can go just cop the draft guide for a discounted price at bdge.co dropping august 1st i love y'all